am Dr. Pat and welcome to Till All Have Heard. I am as excited as I always am about today's broadcast and what makes this broadcast so special. I'm inviting my friends from around the world as we have been hosting a one voice prayer, gathering the body of Christ together to be one people serving and being a voice to one God, one God, one voice, one people. And this week for the next few weeks and throughout this month, we're going to have different guests on the broadcast to bring the word of God to you. And we're so excited to have Pastor Pushy from South Africa, a powerful woman of God, not just to the millennials, but to the body of Christ at large. She carries such a very rare and very strong anointing, anointing on her life. Uh, get ready for the word as it goes forth as she begins to talk about the king on the inside of us, awakening the king inside of us. I don't want you to miss this word. Every week, we're gonna be bringing somebody to you different. And each week you're gonna be like, who is Dr. Pat gonna have next week? We believe that this is a time that we need to model the unity of the faith and the body of Christ coming together. There's so much racial divide. There's so many narratives and so many voices worldwide and so many agendas. And so we want the world to see a model, a kingdom template of every joint fitness supply, the body working together. And Pastor Pushy, she has an incredible anointing and we want you to be a blessing to her as well by following her. Go to her site and you'll see all the information. But right now we're all ready for the word of God. So let's get ready. Call up your friends, share this with other people and let us know that it's going to be a blessing. Let's get ready for the word of God as Pastor Pushy takes us right into the presence of God. Let's get ready. Hi, I'm Pastor Pushy, and today I'm so excited to be speaking to you on One Voice. I believe that God is with us, that He's not schizophrenic, that He speaks one word, and today He would unite hearer and speaker alike. And I want to speak to you from the topic, There is a King in You. Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16, and I'm just going to read one verse. Verse 1 says, The Lord said to Samuel, Go and fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Come on, right where you are, say, I'm chosen. I know you might be by yourself. There might be people there. It might look crazy, but I want your spirit to hear it. I want your mind to hear it. I want your voice to hear. Say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Say, I'm chosen. And the reason why I tell you to say I'm chosen is because it's not always obvious. When God first calls you, it is not obvious. No one may recognize it and sometimes not even you. The Lord sends the prophet to the house of Jesse. He says, I have chosen one. He doesn't say which one. He doesn't say exactly who. He doesn't say how he will do it. He doesn't say when he will do it. He just wants you to trust him. You, you have to go by faith and not by sight. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. You need to be able to trust God even when you cannot trace God. You have to just keep on going. If you believe on the inside of you that God has called you and God has chosen you, you need to be able to continue no matter what it looks like on the outside because God does not give all the details. He says, when you get there, I will show you what to do you are to anoint the one that I indicate so you just need to get there you need to keep stepping you need to keep trusting that God has something great on the inside of you and when the prophet gets there a great prophet that comes you might be so excited thinking finally somebody will recognize the greatness that is on the inside of me and the Bible says that the prophet does not recognize David nobody recognizes David in fact he's not even invited one of the greatest tests is to be able to believe in you when no one else does. When you don't need man's approval and man's endorsement, when you don't need people to encourage you, when you don't need people to approve you and appoint you, when you know that you are anointed and you're not waiting to be appointed, everybody is invited all the other brothers are invited except for him he's not even recognized he's not recognized by his father he's not recognized by his brothers he's not recognized by the prophets but god recognizes you say i'm chosen and then the bible says that when the brothers come and david is the youngest but no one sees anything great in him. They don't even call him. They reject him. They don't even want him to come because there's no possible way that it can be him. But let me tell you something. What everybody rejects is what God accepts. 
They call all the brothers except David. But God accepts the except. Man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. The stone that the builders reject is the one that God accepts. I believe that God has a special calling and sometimes rejection is an indication of that calling upon your life. Come on, say I'm chosen. I'm chosen. You see, the Lord says when David comes, although the prophet doesn't see him, although his father doesn't see him, although his brothers don't see him, the Lord says anoint him. He says this is the one anoint him and David is anointed in the presence of all of his brothers everyone must have thought wow why would God choose him why would God anoint him because the Bible says right after David is anointed he goes back to tending sheep and sometimes Sometimes when a, a great word, like I'm preaching right now, and you get encouraged, and you expect everything to change over your life, you expect miracles to happen instantly, you expect a suddenly, and nothing changes. David was with the sheep before, and here he is, after being anointed and appointed as the future king, he goes back to tending sheep. Nobody changes the way they, they speak to him. Nobody changes the way they treat him or the way they perceive him. And maybe they even treat him worse. You, you might have thought, did God miss it? Did I miss it? Did I imagine it? If God called me, why am I in this situation? If I'm supposed to be king, why am I surrounded by sheep? If I'm supposed to be in a palace, why am, am I stuck in the field? Why am, am I in a situation that I'm in if there's so much gifting on the inside of my life? But sometimes your present does not look like your promise. Hi, I knew that word was gonna be a blessing and you look at you at the edge of your seat. Just wanted to hop on for a minute to let you know, remind you while you're watching, go to my YouTube channel very quickly and subscribe, like, share, notification button. Subscribe, like, share, notification button. The reason why we're asking you to do this, our body that we're pulling together and building together with one voice, our platforms, we're using every social media platform and every media platform that we have to proclaim his agenda and the voice of God to the nations of the earth. We're believing for one million souls, one million millennials, one million voices. And so we need your help. My YouTube channel is just Pat Bailey. Go there, subscribe, like, share, notification button. And on Instagram is official Pat Bailey. Why is this important? Because we are we're declaring that we're going to reach as many as we can because we believe that this is the greatest age of the harvest. Pastor Pushy has been speaking such a strong word. And we're going to continue back with the word in just a moment. But as we network together, one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 because we believe that this is the end time move of God and Satan's doing everything he can to release his agenda and doing everything he, had, he can. So we are going to be wise and hit every platform taking authority of the prince of the power of the airways and flooding those airways with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So not only subscribe for those of that you have, share with other people. We also have, when you go to our website, what you'll see when you scroll down past the One Voice Prayer links that you see there, something called EWTs, Electronic Witnessing Tracks. And what we've done is those are tracks that deal with anxiety, depression, how to trust God, how to know the will of God for your life. At a time when so many people are asking questions and some people are not able to actually meet in church facilities, but from the comfort of your home, you can go to the YouTube site and daily begin to share the word of God with people by sending those links out. And then once they respond, if they're blessed by it, ask them to subscribe to the channel and share it with other people. What a wonderful, what we call it, digital evangelism. And some of you can take that and just boost it on your page and start witnessing and ministering to so many people. We are the salt of the earth. That's the king on the inside of us that's rising up to do what God has called us to do. And we shall not be defeated. We decree that the kingdoms of this earth shall become the kingdom of our God. And as we witness to others, what we make happen for others, God will turn back around in the circle of life and bless us. For he that wins souls is wise. So take those tracks. Go look on the website. I mean, go to our YouTube channel. You'll see EWT, Electronic Witnessing Tracks. We have them in different languages. We have them in Farsi, in Arabic, 
in French, in English, in Tamil, in Russian, so that you can, friends that you have from different parts of the world, you can send it to them or different ethnic ethnicities in the area or the country that you live in. You can witness to those people groups. And then some of you can just take those electronic witnessing tracks, put them, those little video links, Put them on your page, post them on your page and send them out and boost them in different parts of the world and watch people respond back. And when they respond back and ask for prayer, now you're witnessing to the nations through the internet. We call it digital evangelism. We're believing for a million souls. We'd love to have you on our team. We'd love you to be a part of this worldwide agenda of the Great Commission assignment of reaching the masses because we believe that we're living in the last days. All the indicators, they're no longer on the wall. They're a bullhorn. Like everybody's come out of the closet. Everybody's pushing their agenda. But guess what? We've decided we're going to trumpet and we're going to proclaim the agenda of Almighty God. Sound an alarm on his holy mountain. Let's get ready to go back to the work. Don't forget to go to the YouTube channel and begin to witness and on Instagram, official Pat Bailey. You'll go there and put these links out on your Instagram channel. And don't forget to let Pastor Andre and Pastor Jenny know that this broadcast is being a blessing to you. Also, those of you that are watching, we have started a grandmama and granddad, a grandparent challenge. I felt like during this time, we need to really pray for our grandchildren and our children, and particularly our grandchildren, because there's so many things in the school system, so many things through the media, television, so many things on even hidden in these games that are after our emerging future of our our young children and also because I'm a grandmother and the greatest part of my life is outside of Jesus is those little grandbabies I have three I have two boys and a girl Tia who's the oldest Kingston who's next and then Christian and I want to send you pictures you'll see pictures on the screen of my three grands but guess what I'd like to do I want pictures of your grands and we're going to for the next 60 days we want all the pictures every grandmother watching every parent watching send pictures so that we can pray over your children and let's just have a little competition going boasting I would like to hear the funniest grandparent story that you have with your grandchildren I know I have some funny ones with mine and I'll begin to share mine with yours and we're just praying for families for not only household salvation but household protection and I want to pray and to release the prophetic destiny in your children's life so let's all come together all you grandparents out there I can't wait to see your grands you know that's the greatest part of our life is those grandparents kids. That's probably them talking to me, trying to get a hold of Yaya right now. They call me Yaya. What name do your grandkids call you? I'd like to know that. Let's get back in the broadcast and as a family together, let's cover each other's family. And grandparents, I can't wait to hear from you. Let's get back into the word. And still in that situation, you need to know that there is something on the inside of me that I'm chosen. It may not look the way it's supposed to look, but I'm still going to hold on to the promise. I'm still going to believe God. But just because I'm called to be king doesn't mean it's for now. Can you trust God? Can you hold on even for a tomorrow promise? Can you hold on to a tomorrow word? Can you trust God even when it's not happening right now? Everything is about God's timing. Can you wait for God's timing? He's, the father sends David, the king, into the fields, to the battle lines because war had broken out between the Israelites and the Philistines and his brothers had gone to battle against Goliath and Goliath is raging and ranting and everybody is terrified and the present king in there's so many obstacles. You're stuck with the sheep. You're the wrong race. You're the wrong color. You're the wrong gender. You're the wrong age. You're the wrong nationality. You're the wrong social standing. Here is David, the least, the youngest, the most insignificant. He's, he's been told he's supposed to be king. He's been said by, you know, the pastor, there's greatness on the inside of you. There is a king within you. He's been told all of these things, and yet everything around him says contrary. I'm speaking to you today and telling you there is a king on the inside of you and you're saying pastor p i'm stuck with the sheep i'm in the field and even after the oil is poured even after the anointing he is sent to the battle lines where all his eldest brothers are and there the father says go and give them some food take them grain take them bread take them supplies you mean to tell me the future king is being treated like uber eats 
Don't you know that I'm supposed to be the king? Why are you treating me like Mr. Delivery? And David is sent to the same person who was anointed in front of them. They're refusing to acknowledge the call on his life. And they're sending him to deliver and serve the brothers. The ones that God rejected he has to serve. Sometimes God will test you in how you treat people who you feel are beneath you. How you treat people who you feel don't deserve. How do you be behave? How do you respond when you see people receiving what you know God promised you? How do you behave when somebody else is living your promise and you know that they don't deserve it? It's serving beneath you. It's serving the wrong person beneath you. Here David is supposed to be king. He has to go and serve the current king and the brothers who has rejected him. I know they refuse to acknowledge the calling of my life in hopes that I will also not acknowledge the calling of my life. But let me tell you something. If serving is beneath me, that means that the king, the palace is above me. You need to be able to serve because when it's your time, nobody will be able to stop it. And just because I'm coming to bring bread, just because I'm coming to bring, bring supplies and grain, doesn't mean that I don't know who I am. I haven't forgotten my anointing. I haven't forgotten where I'm going. I might be in the wilderness, but I'm killing the lion and the bear where I am. Don't ever let people underestimate you just because you're not wearing your kingly robes. You're still in your dress rehearsal. You're still practicing. You're still sharpening your skills. If God has you hidden, that's because it's not time for you to come out yet. And when he gets there, the Bible says that his eldest brother picks a fight with him, falsely accuses him, saying, what are you doing here who are you and where did you leave those few sheep and is tempted to respond and react in a bad situation Eliab is accusing him Eliab says I know how wicked you are and how bad your heart is when people falsely accuse you they reveal who they are and here he is revealing who he is because the Lord had rejected him. He said, don't look at his outward appearance. I've rejected him because of his heart. And here he's accusing David of the same thing. And it is tempting to fight with Eliab. But I want you to realize that you need to learn to pick your battles. When you have a great calling, when you have a great destiny, you can't fight with everybody. You cannot attend every fight you're invited to. You cannot fight where there is nothing to be gained. There is nothing to be gained from fighting with people that are below your destiny. There is nothing to be gained from fighting with Eliab. Eliab has nothing to offer you. Eliab is a distraction of the enemy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to push the wrong buttons so that you react instead of respond in a godly way and send you back to the sheep he says who did you leave those sheep with go back to the sheep and if you waste your time fighting with people who are below you fighting with mosquitoes when you have a giant standing in front of you are you gonna listen to Eliab or are you gonna listen to Goliath because while Eliab is talking Goliath is shouting they can hear Goliath taunting the Israelites are you gonna listen to the jealous or are you gonna listen to the giants are you gonna stand and respond in the wrong situation or are you gonna turn and face your destiny don't waste your strength on Eliab he has nothing to offer you all you're gonna do is get your hands dirty there is nothing to be gained by fighting the wrong fight you have to save your strength you have to save your anointing you have to save your focus for what God has for you don't let somebody treat you in a way that will reduce you how people treat you is a reflection on them how you respond is a reflection on you you have too great a destiny too great a journey to waste your time fighting the wrong fight save your energy pick your fight and don't fight where there is nothing to be gained Eliab has nothing to lose by fighting you he's already reached his destination his pinnacle of success is picking a fight with you his sole ambition is to fight with you if you fight with Elias you'll win the fight but you lose your destiny don't stop to throw stones at every barking dog when you have somewhere great to get to. And the Bible says that while Elias is talking, David decides, the Bible says he turned. I need you to turn your focus. 
I need you to turn. I need you to do a 180. I need you to turn. I know you were, you were going in one direction. I know you were angry. I know you are fighting one fight. But I need you to turn and focus on the real giant. I need you to focus on what God has for you. The Bible says he turned because I don't have time to waste with things that are not important for my destiny. My future is too great for me to waste fighting with Eliab, Abinadab, and Shammah. I need to focus on what God has for me. I've got a giant to kill. I hear my destiny calling me. I've got big dreams, big vision, and a big destiny. I don't have time to fight over small things. I've got a giant to kill. And David says, Eliab, speak to the hand. He says, what will be done for the man who kills this giant? These are the questions, destiny questions, young people, that you have to ask yourself. What is my purpose? What is my calling? What is my reward in this? What is to be gained from what I'm about to do? If I'm going to fight, let it be worth it. I'm not going to waste my strength fighting a useless fight. If I'm going to fight, I'm going to kill a giant. I'm not going to fight with mosquitoes. I'm not going to play around with the pigs. I'm going to do what God has for me to do. He says, what will be done? For the man who kills this child and they say the king will give great wealth and his daughter in marriage to the person who kills this giant and his whole family will be exempted from taxes and then david says something he says wait a minute who is this uncircumcised philistine that dares defile the armies of the living god he said don't lose heart on account of him i will fight him well, what a broadcast this has been. And just get ready for next week. It's just only going to get better. What an anointing woman of God and a powerful word. You take that word and you you begin to think about it. Um, don't let the enemy push your buttons and you pick your battles. You don't have time to think about it with Sam Ballard and Tobias. He did not come down. Uh, Nehemiah never did come down to answer Sam Ballard and Tobias. He's like, if I come down, the work will be delayed. Don't allow during this season, because there's a lot of voices out there and a lot of narratives around the world. And a lot of agendas and hidden agendas that are being just exposed around the world. Don't be deceived. One friend said it this way, weapons of mass distractions. You don't want to become and be fall privy to the weapon of mass distractions. Don't be distracted. God has given us the work to do. This is an end time move of God, the greatest age of the harvest, and don't be distracted. Begin to identify with the king on the inside of you and those that are naysayers and haters drinking haterade and those that are trying to come against you. Don't even dignify their insults or what they're doing. Don't even dignify it with a response. Just continue on and continue to build the work. We'd love to have you partner with us. By that we mean to pray with us to uh, witness to other people, to help build our platforms, telling people about Faith Broadcast Network, telling people to watch the broadcast, uh, sending out the electronic witnessing tracks, uh, also becoming a prayer warrior for those that are coming from around the world. Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists from all around the world are responding. We've had 61,000 in Indonesia, 40,000 in Kuwait, and the numbers go on. And so we need us. We're building up a strong army. We have several pastors in South Africa, in, in Zimbabwe, in Madagascar, in Lebanon, in Kuwait, all around that are part of our team, our global team. And we'd love to have you become a part of that team with us. And if you would like to have a one voice prayer in your area, wherever you are, or representing your nation or your millennials would like to host one, just give us a call or either email us at patriciabailey.org. You can go to our website and email me and leave a message. You can go to my YouTube channel, Pat Bailey, and leave a message. You can go to my Instagram channel and leave a message, official Pat Bailey. You can go to onevoiceprayer.com and leave a message. There's so many ways you can connect. And when you go to our website, you'll see the number that you can actually call, which is country code 1336 782-1228 and you really get to talk to me and I really want to talk to you. I believe we're really better together. We're living in the last days and I believe that the enemy is trying to release everything he can to distract the body of Christ and to make us question our identity and to question the narrative that we're supposed to have and to question our assignment and what we're supposed to be doing. That's why it's good to know who you are. God always deals with identity coupled with purpose. I call them the power twins. 
identity and purpose. And boy, does Pastor Pushy reveal the identity and the purpose that God has called us to. Well, get ready for next week. It's going to be more of the word from Pastor Pushy, and you are going to be so blessed. It's just going to get better. And I believe that God is using this platform uh, that you're watching from to bring the body of Christ together. The world needs a model of unity, of the unity of the faith and of love and that we really can work together and we really do have an assignment. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Don't listen to the other voices. Follow the narrative of the word of God. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And we believe that at a time that the world is looking for justice, the world is looking for peace, the world is looking for love, the world is looking for purpose. We, the Ecclesia, the body of Christ, we are the ones that are supposed to be the city that is set upon the hill light in the midst of darkness and the salt of the earth. And until all have heard, this is Dr. Pat. Can't wait to see you next week till all have heard. And don't forget to go to the YouTube channel and hit subscribe, the notification button. Don't forget to go over to our Instagram page and don't forget to let Faith, let Faith Broadcast Network know how much this broadcast is being a blessing to you. And on that note, I'd like to thank Pastor Andre and Pastor Jenny. Until next week, this is Dr. Pat. The power of choice all hinges on your thoughts. Your decisions in life determine your quality of life. If you desire to live a more fulfilled life, everything begins with how you filter your thoughts and emotions. What is dictating your decisions? Your emotional thoughts or the Word of God? In the heat and pressure of life, do you find yourself saying, I could have handled that differently? Learn to pause for a moment and ask yourself, what does the Word say about what I am going through? Dr. Bailey's new book entitled, The Filter Factor, will help you live out and apply the Word of God as a way of life to produce tangible manifestations. The Word knows what to do, and it was designed to be the filter for your thoughts, emotions, and ultimately, your decisions. It's time to live the life you've dreamed of, and that life begins with learning how to filter your thoughts through the Word of God. The Filter Factory will teach you life application how-tos for living the life you desire. You no longer have to be trapped or live a life beneath your optimum potential. The Filter Factory will enable you to live free from fear, unforgiveness, and unfiltered thoughts that have governed your life. Get ready to take a hold of the life you were meant to live. A new life of freedom awaits you. Purchase your copy of The Filter Factor today at patriciabailey.org. There are several ways you can become a co-laborer with Dr. Pat Bailey. Write to us visit our website or give us a call and please remember to pray for dr. Bailey as she travels abroad ministering to unreached people join us next time as we respond to the cry of the nations till all have heard